بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبا ورحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيعف توفيق to continue our study of Islamic plan for life and inshallah in this session we discuss Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage to Mecca for sure Hajj is the greatest getting together of Muslims in the world and maybe even among non-Muslims uh, it would not be uh, such a great gathering with millions of people at least it is rare of course, Alhamdulillah, in the recent years we have uh, Arba'in procession that again uh, millions of people, maybe more than the time of season of Hajj, they get together. But because the crowd go and return over a period of time, uh, so somehow maybe to be at the same time in the same place as millions of people maybe would be exclusive to Hajj so it's a great gathering in the world and it started even before Islam so in this session, inshallah, we want to see what is the history of it, what's the philosophy of it, what are the main practices during Hajj, and what are the outcomes of Hajj. So we would have, inshallah, a very important discussion about Hajj. According to some people, Kaaba was built by the Prophet Ibrahim but it seems it's more likely and more probable to say that actually Prophet Ibrahim rebuilt Kaaba not that he built it for the first time in this book it is preferred that it was built by Prophet Adam ala nabiyyina wa ali wa alayhi salam Kaaba this cubic construction it was built in the time of Prophet Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salam what Prophet Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salam did was he restored maybe we can understand from this ayah that he had something remaining as foundations of Kaaba because Allah says وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ remember when Ibrahim and Ismail were raising the foundations of the house so it seems that there were some foundations but they were ruined so they built upon those foundations the walls again and also Allah says uh, in the Quran to the Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail an instruction was given Tahira baytiya clean my house 
for those who want to go there and do tawaf those who want to stay there those who want to do ruku those who want to do sujood so it seems that Kaaba was built before and according to some historical reports from the time of Prophet Adam and Prophet Ibrahim rebuilt it cleaned that place prepared it for pilgrims for visitors of the house of Allah and Allah also says in the Quran that Ibrahim was asked to call people azzin fin nasib al hajj ya'tuka this is in uh, the book and also if you want the reference is in surah hajj verse 27 wa azzin fin nasib al hajj ya'tuka rijala وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ Allah says to uh, Prophet Ibrahim in this verse 27 of Surah Hajj that he should call people Azan, like Azan, Azan and Azan are from the same root but Azan is verb, command actually Mu'azan is the one who declares, who calls for prayer. Azen means declare, call. Fenase bil hajj. They would come rajalan on their feet or on uh, thin camels, as an example. Yaatina min kull fajjan amir. They will come from far valleys to do their visitation of the house so it's very historical very much um, connected with prophets and messengers but has a special connection with prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail before I mention the connection, special connection with Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail, I would like also to remind you of a very important ayah in the Quran, which Allah says, "Inna awwal bayt wudal nas laladhi bebakkata mubarak." Truly, the very first house which has ever been built for humanity, for mankind, lenas people is that house in that valley in that place in Mecca which is Masjid al-Haram because Masjid al-Haram is built around Kaaba so Kaaba which is house of God and then Masjid al-Haram which is like a, a kind of uh, territory around that Kaaba is very historical it is house of God Baytullah but for people because Allah doesn't want any house whatever belongs to Allah belongs to people Allah has made this house for people so that they can get baraka from the mubaraka there is hedaya hudan linnas there are ayat there so there are lots of things amn is there safety and security is there lots of benefits and baraka is there and i believe personally that from kaaba the light is spread all over the earth some years ago in the Hajj I had some talks for the brothers in our group about light and we explored this concept so 
Let's focus a little bit on Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail. We said, first of all, they raised the found from the foundations again the walls. Yarfa'u Ibrahim al Qawa'idah min al wa Ismail. We said that Allah told Ibrahim to clean this house. Allah said to Ibrahim, Adhin fin nas bil hajj. It is said that uh, Maqam Ibrahim, the standpoint of Ibrahim, is actually where he stood on a stone to declare. But there are lots of references to Ibrahim and Ismail. Because Hajj, as inshallah we will explain later, is a series of practices, actions, staying, etc. Many of them are like reconstruction of what Ibrahim, Ismail, or mother of Ismail did. And this is a way for us to follow Ibrahim ala nabina wa salam because Ibrahim is a great champion of Tawheed even Allah says in the Quran that وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا who is better in religion than someone who submits his face to God and do, does ihsan وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Our Prophet, all Muslims, Moses, Jesus, their followers, they were all followers of Ibrahim. Of course, Ibrahim was follower of Noah. وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمَ All the Prophets were following the same line. But for us, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, Ibrahim السلام, is the first meeting point and is very significant for us. And he is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> tested him in all different ways. After completing all the tests, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed him as Imam for Nas. So this is the first house for Nas. And Ibrahim is Imam for Nas, for mankind. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam when left his dear son Ismail and Hajar in this place like putting part of his heart over there he entrusted them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he used to sometimes visit them but at one point Allah said that he should raise the foundations, he should call for Hajj and also we have the story of Ismail being thirsty when his father was away and mother was looking for water and as you know she was so desperately going between Safa and Marwa, two mount hills actually, which are there looking for water. And then Ismail with his feet was, uh, you know, touching and, you know, somehow, you know, maybe out of, you know, thirst, you know, was crying. And then water of Zamzam came. Or for example, when Ibrahim wanted to slaughter Ismail because of the dreams, repeated dreams that he had. Then how Satan came to stop him 
and he threw stones at Satan. All these important events in the life of Ibrahim and his family now are integrated into Hajj because we can learn from Ibrahim because we are in a way or another going through the same test and because of Allah's loyalty Allah is so grateful is Shakur not only Shakir he's Shakur and he is Wafi he has Wafa he's loyal he is grateful so he's showing his appreciation of his servant Ibrahim of his servant Ismail of his maid Hajar and wants to tell all human beings that these are not to be forgotten he would never forget and we should not forget people who have contributed in a positive way to our life to our history to our community to our families so every Muslim once upon his or her life when certain conditions are met there is for example health there is no you know security life threatening risk there is no illness for example if nowadays for example if you know visa is available you know flight is available you know so if you can if you cannot it's beyond your control then of course no but if you can if you are mustati in different means and ways different meanings and ways financially health wise security wise at least once you must go there so once is watch for mustati this is hajjatul islam and this is watch obligatory as soon as you become mustati you must go lillahi ala nas hajjul bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila this is Surat Al Imran, verse 97. It's for the sake of Allah upon Nas that they should go to this house that Allah has made available for them to benefit from it. But Manistatara ilayhi sabila, whoever is mustati, is capable to go. Then if you go and perform your Hajjatul Islam, the Wajib one, then you can go again as Mustahab Hajj. Or maybe, for example, if someone is going on behalf of someone else. Or maybe, for example, a person was not Mustati and went, so that is not counted. And then when he becomes Mustati, has to go again lots of of course important issues are here you check with your marja but we are talking in a very general way so for someone who is mustati at least once in his life he or she must go one time is wajib for mustati this shows how important is salah uh, hajj sorry salat is very important and we have to do it every day a few times but Hajj is a package for life and if you do it properly it would be remaining for your entire life and the hereafter and our hadith very much also condemn people who are able to go for Hajj and they don't go their Islam would not be complete they are Muslim but if they die without doing Hajj then they may not be resurrected as Muslim because Hajj is very important you need that light with you in the hereafter you need that achievement with you in the hereafter Hajj is in a season which starts few 
you know, days before the Hajj. You can go, of course, earlier to Mecca, but normally caravans, they arrive few days before the month of the Hajj. Month of the Hajj is the 12th month in Islamic calendar. So you may go a few days earlier, but the main thing is that by the seventh, eighth, you must be there because of practical reasons. Otherwise, if you just want to go and perform Hajj and return, you have to arrive there in the way that you arrive on the eighth, this is the minimum. You do your Umrah and then on the day of ninth, you have to become again Muhrim or in the night before or the last chance is on the day of the ninth, become Muhrim in Haram, go to Arafat. So midday, you must be in Arafat, midday of the ninth. This is the last chance, but because you have to do Umrah before that, so eight. But normally the airports are closed maybe from six, seven, so you have to go earlier. Uh, then when uh, you do all A'mal, by midday twelfth, you can be finished. So from 9 to 12, it's, uh, if everything is packed, it's four days. It normally can take longer. And I will explain, inshallah, the practices that have to be done. So all Muslims from all over the world, in these four days, they are together. Some may come uh, earlier, some may stay later, but in these four days, they're all together. All these, say now six million, you know, if before Corona, for example, they were together. Maybe there will be more capacity in future. All are together in th these four days in a limited place. Around Kaaba, we have Masjid al Haram. Actually, Kaaba is inside Masjid al Haram. But then we have an area which are defined in our sunnah, in our hadith, by different mawaqit as a haram, as sanctuary. There's a sanctuary around Kaaba. It's not circle. It's based on certain points that they are connected to each other. Whoever from outside, for example, from Iran, from Pakistan, from, I don't know, Iraq, from Europe, from US, Australia, Africa, when they go for Hajj, in certain miqat, they have to become Muhram. They have to become Muhram. Then this Ihram continues till they go into Masjid al Haram, do Umrah, and then they do Taqseer, and then certain things become halal. Certain things still have to be observed till they become again muharam for Hajj Tamattu, for those who go from outside. Hajj Tamattu. And then after this Ihram, there are some practices I will mention later. And then everything will finish by uh, staying in the, the nights of. 10th and 11th in Mina and then leaving after midday Mina and of course doing Tawaf of Hajj and Salat and Sa'i and Tawaf al Nisa and Salat after the midday of the 12th or maybe some people go 
even when they are in Mina, during the day or er early night, they go. There are some ways that you can do it. So, what we have is Miqat, which is where Ihram starts. Then we have Haram, which is a closer uh, and sh smaller area. Some uh, places and Miqat and Haram, you know, maybe sometimes coincide. On map you can, you know, see the size of Haram. But Masjid al-Haram is inside Haram. It's much smaller than Haram. Arafat is in Haram, Mena is in Haram. Masjid al-Haram is very small. So it's not like Shrine we say, you know, Haram of Imam Raza, etc. That Shrine is just one construction or complex. But this Haram is a big territory. In any case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us once upon our life, if we are mustati, to go there. Now, what's the philosophy of Hajj? We already mentioned some aspects, but let us review all these philosophies. These, uh, points about philosophy of Hajj. First of all, it is a sign of our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all go there as a kind of response, reply to Allah's call for Hajj on behalf of Allah of course, his messenger called. But who said to Ibrahim, Azzin fil nas fil hajj? Allah. Therefore, Quran says, Lillah. So it's for Allah. And Ibrahim was just declaring these two people. So we are responding to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a beautiful hadith here. in Muntakhabu Mizan al-Hikmah, a scale of wisdom. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, وَهَذَا بَيْتٌ إِسْتَعْبَدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَلْقَهُ لِيَخْتَبِرَ طَاعَتَهُمْ فِي إِطْيَانِهِ this is a house that Allah has asked his people to worship him through this so that he would examine their obedience in implementing this command. Allah encourage them and urge them to respect, to honor this house and visit this house. Ziyarah means to visit. وَقَدْ جَعَلَ مَحَلَّ جَعَلَهُ مَحَلَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ This is a place that Allah made it a place for prophets. Many prophets were visiting and maybe even many, as to according to some students, are buried you know, in Hijr Ismail, maybe many prophets are buried there, or um, I'm saying m maybe many, uh, because I don't remember exactly how many. It, this uh, is my uh, problem that I don't remember exactly. وَقِبْلَةً لِلْمُصَلِّينَ اللَّهِ Allah made this qibla for musalleen. All Muslims from all over the world they face this house. How much unity, how much harmony this creates, in addition to lots of realities which are there. It's not just a contract that we could say, okay, any direction. No, as I said, this house has a special barakah. This house is a center for a spread of 
and distribution of light. Lots of realities are here. This is the place from which the earth was expanded. Dahwul Ard. Lots of points are here. But just one point is that we all also point during Salah to this house. Qiblatan lil musallina lah. Wa huwa shu'batun min ridwan. It's very important. This is a branch of the pleasure of Allah. If you want to reach pleasure of Allah, this is one branch that you can hold onto it. وَتَرِيقٌ يُؤَدِّي إِلَىٰ غُفْرَانَ This is a path that would lead to his forgiveness. مَنْسُوبٌ عَلَى اسْتِوَاءِ الْكَمَالِ وَمُجْتَمَعِ الْعَظَمَةِ Imam says, this house is mansub, nasaba. Nasaba means when you set up something. This is set up عَلَى اسْتِوَاءِ الْكَمَالِ According to perfection according to the you know upright perfection and it is mujtama it's a place of getting together of avama so lots of greatness lots of respect are invested here in this place so hajj is a kind of uh, response to allah's call a sign of response to not only Allah's call for Hajj, Allah's call for Ibadah. So there are two floors. We say, Labbaik, here I am, means I am here to perform Hajj. But also means here I am as a servant for all life, not just for Hajj. Therefore, our Imams and also their followers, great ulama, pious mu'mineen, mystics, when they were saying labaik, they were very much understanding the greatness of this sentence. Labaik is a sentence, means here I am. There's a beautiful hadith that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, when he was going uh, to, uh, to say labbaik, he was so much moved that in Khisal, Shaykh Saduq quotes that Malik ibn Anas says, Hajjajtu ma'a sadiqe sanatan. He says, one year I performed Hajj with Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn al-Sadiq. He says, فَلَمَّا اسْتَوَتْ بِهِ رَاحِلَتُهُ عِنْدَ الْإِحْرَامِ When everything was all right and, uh, you know, his, for example, camel, whatever he was riding, stopped at Miqat and he was going to say, لَبَّايْكَ كُوَانَ كُلَّ مَا هَمَّ بِالْتَلْبِيَةِ إِنْ قَتَعَ السَّوْتُ فِي حَلْقِهِ Whenever he wanted to say labbaik Allahumma labbaik, his voice was stuck. He was not able to talk. Wakada yakhirru min rahilati. It was uh, very close to falling down from back of his mule. فَقُلْتُ قُلْ يَبْنَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَلَا بُدَّ لَكَ مِنْ أَنْ تَقُولُ I said, O son of the Prophet, say, you have to say this labbaik, say it. فَقَالَ يَبْنَ أَبِي آمِرْ كَيْفَ أَجْسُرُ أَنْ أَقُولْ لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ How can I dare saying لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ Here I am. Here I am, my Lord. وَأَخْشَى أَنْ يَقُولَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ لِي لَا لَبَّيْكَ وَلَا سَعَدَيْكَ He says, I am worried that instead of Allah welcoming me, Allah would say, لَا لَبَّيْكَ وَلَا سَعَدَيْكَ You are not accepted. You are not welcomed. So, this لَبَّيْكَ is 
very significant, not just lab bag for Hajj, although that is also important, but it's something that it's a summary of our stance as Abd before our Master, before our Lord. If in our life we have not been obedient, then we have to do Tawbah and we have to make firm decision that now I want to change. From now I want to be a servant. So, Ihram starts with this declaration. So one important aspect of Hajj is demonstrating our obedience to Allah and replying to his call. His general call for servitude استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم Listen and respond to Allah and his messenger when he calls for something that gives you life and also call for Hajj. Another important aspect of Hajj is to gain lots of light, lots of guidance, lots of barakah for our entire life and also for our family and communities. We have to take for them. You know, you take some souvenirs, but you need to take also some spiritual souvenirs. You have to take light. There's hadith that when someone comes back from Hajj, go and quickly visit them because they have light of Hajj that if they commit a sin, will go away. So before they commit a sin, go and visit them. There's light. Inshallah, many hujjahs don't commit sin at all, but you shouldn't take risk. Also, it's this kind of respect that we visit them soon. So they take souvenir of light, of a spirituality, of good memories for their communities and families. Hajj is also a sign of Muslim unity. Muslims from all, all over the world, different languages, different even schools of Islam. They go together, shoulder by shoulder, knees by knees, you know. Sometimes, you know, there is no a space. You are really, really, you know, uh, touching each other. This closeness in physics brings also unity also a great opportunity for addressing needs people of the same country can meet each other people of the same region can meet each other people of the same continent can and people from all over the world in Hajj can meet each other they can address issues of Ummah if Hajj is really utilized it would help us with every aspect with our spirituality with our you know uh, community affairs with muslim unity with world politics even financially economically can help us a lot already it's helping but it can even help more also it's a sign of simplicity you learn that life is not that complicated. We make it very complicated. You can have very simple life. Simple dress, simple food, simple accommodation, simple transportation, simple shoes, <laughs> not that much of clothes. Rich and poor together. Of course, unfortunately, little by little, luxury is also being introduced to Hajj. But you should be not suffering, you should not endanger your health, but not also too much of luxury. Hajj is not a five-star holidays. Hajj is a spiritual retreat, is a community retreat. It's something to bring rich and poor together. So you should try to keep the spirit of Hajj. 
simplicity, unity, brotherhood. Lots of beautiful points are in Hajj that make Hajj very memorable. Okay, now let's have a quick review of some of the actions in Hajj and then finish. Of course, as we said several times, this book is not book of Ahkam. We don't mention Ahkam here. Inshallah, people for Ahkam, they can refer to their own uh, religious authorities. Shia refer to their Maraj. If we have Sunni brothers and sisters who are reading this book or listening, they can also uh, refer to the reliable books of fiqh. What is here is just giving us the framework. First, you should arrive in one of the miqats, one of the places from where Ihram starts. For some people, it's very close to Mecca, for example. For some people, is farther away. For example, if you go from Jeddah, it's Juhfa, where Qadir Khum took place. If you go from Medina, Masjid al Shajar. So, different places they are declared. When you are there, after Qusl, which is Mustahab, but what is important, your body must be clean, and ritually uh, clean, Tahir. Then you should have dress of Ihram for men. It should not be, uh, you know, something which is uh, their normal dress. Two pieces of you know, clothes, uh, like two pieces of towel, for example. Uh, and with certain requirements they put on this uh, uh, dress on themselves to clothes for women is of course more uh, relaxed and then they make niya and then they say labbaik allahumma labbaik and uh, there are ways to say it which would have more reward by addition of some words and then you become muhrim certain things would not be permissible uh, for example you know a smelling fragrance looking into mirror uh, for example especially some people may some depending on your marja uh, whether it's always or you know for uh, beautification or etc uh, saying for example a few words which are mentioned or for example I don't know quarreling or hunting you know there are different things you know having you know shadow above your head with lots of of course details become haram having marital relation so you are in a special state of ihram you understand uh, that you are in a special uh, condition and then you go to mecca you go to masjid al-haram you do tawaf of course this ihram was ihram of umrah so you do tawaf of umrah salat of tawaf umrah you do sa'i and then you do taqseer so umrah is finished umrah yatamato is finished this is for people who come, go from other countries or other cities then again you have to become muhrim but this time for hajj tamato between umrah and hajj many things become halal but some things still remain haram then when you become muhram you have to go for ninth of arafat day of arafat to the plain of arafat and it's such blessed place that just being there is rukn there are parts of hajj which are rukn parts which are not rukn like salat you know 
in Salat we have some parts which are rook, like ruku, sujud. Some are not rook, like tashahud, salam. Here also, wuquf is rook. It's so important that it has become one of the fund fundamental actions of Hajj, just to be there from midday till maghrib, just to be there wuquf. Of course, mu'minin do salat, do ayah arafah, etc. But staying there is wajib. And then they go to Mash'ar and they have to stay the night in Mash'ar and then in the uh, morning they move towards Mina. They have to do Ram, they have to uh, slaughter, do sacrifice, they have to do Halq, if they are the first Hajj they have to shave, men have to shave and if not you know taqsir and then they can change their clothes and they have nothing special to do till night in the night they have to stay in Mena night of 10th means before 11th night of 11th means before 12th but during the day of 11th also they have to do three ram 12 also three jam rami of three jamarat and after midday they can leave mina they can go to had to masjid al haram and do tawaf of hajj salat sa'i tawaf and nisa salat and then finish so this is a summary of the practices of hajj as I said, many of them have historical uh, connection with Ibrahim and Ismail and Hajar. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we finished this lesson. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Hajj with Ma'rifa, Hajj which is accepted. And whenever we cannot go there, we ask Allah to give us the reward of Hajj by enable us to join our brothers and sisters who go there and sharing with them their reward inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin